Namaskar. Hello everyone. Okay, today we're going to talk about Mrigashira Nakshatra or Invaka. It was called Invaka in the old days in Vedic times, so I'm also going to be using that term as well. So just keep that in mind. All right, so Mrigashira. Mrigashira, let's start with the Sanskrit name because that's always at the root of everything, you know, that the Sanskrit names given to a thing are have so many layers of meaning. So Mrigashira, it means the Mriga means a deer, it means the head of the deer. Okay? So this constellation is thought of as the head of a deer. But it also means it also can be translated as like the deer headed or the deer faced, the deer eyed, the doe faced, you know, like how deer have these soft, gentle eyes and like really round eyes, you know, and doe like the doe faced, you know, so it can also be seen as that. And then invaka actually means like a gentle request, like a softly whispered request or a gentle um, entreaty, you know, um, it's a, a gentle a supplication. Um, that's what that's what invaka means. So right away we get this kind of like gentle quality to the star. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like deer and a gentle request, a whisper, you know. Um, that's what invaka means. And that makes sense because you know how each star has a shakti or an energy to it. This star is said to be soft and gentle. So this is a good star for doing soft and gentle things. Um, it's also a mula or plant star. So remember the mula or the plant nakshatras, these are also stars that are more about relationships. They're more sensitive. They're, uh, you know, more oriented towards pleasure or boga. Remember the uh, boga or Vishnu stars? Um, this star is like that. So it's, it's uh, and it's, you know, tamasic too. So it's kind of, it's more pleasure oriented, whereas we're going to find out, okay? Um, and more relationship oriented, as we're going to find out. So, where to begin with this one? Um, I think, yeah, okay, so the deity is Soma. Soma is three things, actually. So once again, Sanskrit names have so many layers of meaning. Most Sanskrit sutras or words have at least three layers of meaning, one for the physical, one for the material or spiritual, or basically for the three realms, you know, um, and three types of consciousness. So there's three interpretations, you know. And so uh, with Soma, it's very interesting because Soma can refer to three different things. Soma can refer to the God, the God of immortality, which were, which is the God that rules this star. Okay. And then Soma can also refer to the drink that was drunk, the Soma drink, the nectar, the ambrosia, the nectar of the gods that kept them immortal. And again, so Soma is a deity of immortality. Soma is also a drink. And then also another meaning of Soma is the moon. Soma is just a name for the moon. So this star is also deeply intertwined with the moon. Its planetary lord is Mars, but that's not as important as this moon energy, okay? And again, the planetary lord is overemphasized in the pop culture Wikipedia version of learning nakshatras, which is not what you want to learn it from. And um, because again, other, other, that's, Mars is just its ruler in the Vimshatari Dasha list, but there's other Dashas that give di totally different planetary rulers for all the 27 nakshatras. So don't bank too much on Mars, but that it, Mars is a factor because this is a searching and hunting star, as we're going to find out, and Mars has to do with hunting and searching. But yeah, there's three different um, meanings of the, of the word Soma that we first should understand. Okay. So now let's go right into the myth. Why is it called Mrigashir, or the head of the deer? So it all goes back to the very beginning of creation. So remember, at Kritika, we have Agni, we have the seed. Kritika is ruled by Agni. Agni is the seed. Remember, it's the Shukram, the potential, the initiating energy. 
From that, Rohini is the next star, ruled by Brahma, the creator, who's creating. So again, Rohini is about growth and creation. It was Brahma, it was, it's the favorite star for that. As Brahma is going about creating, as the myth goes, well, Brahma has to create, he has to have a consort to, to make children. Well, he doesn't have anyone. He's the creator, so he creates, the first woman he creates is also his daughter. But he has to have children with her. And that's a very awkward situation for him. So he creates Saraswati, or Vak, the goddess of speech, because speech goes along with creation and we speak things into existence. So Saraswati is the consort of Brahma, the creator. And, and so he's like, hey, I have to... I have to have, you know, I have to have a kid with you. And she's like, oh my God, how could I be into that? You're my father. How could I see you that way? And he's like, oh, I understand, but this is just a tough situation that I'm in. And he pursues her and she resists. And she keeps resisting and she ends up fleeing his realm and flees into the creation. And she becomes various animals and then becomes a deer to run from him swiftly. And Brahma ends up chasing her and becomes a deer too to chase he chases her through creation and he and you know they're running and you know it's this whole searching quality that i'm talking about with this star he's hunting for her and he keeps chasing her and as he's just about to pounce on her and violate her and she's still resisting it the entire time so he's about to like rape his own daughter right at that point and he's about to violate her shiva steps in rudra and shoots his bow and arrow and decapitates Brahma, takes off his head. So now he, and then he grabs the head, which is a deer, because he's in a deer form, and he throws the head of the deer up into the stars. And that becomes Mrigashira Nakshatra, the head of the deer. And it's right next to the hunter, Shiva, which is Ardra or Rudra, which we're going to get to in the next one. And so this is very much a star that has that whole stigma related to it. So Brahma is even called Mrigayu, which is a, a, he's given, it's a word that means the violator, and it's the stigma that he is given. And other versions of the myth, this is why he has the four heads, because, to, to, because basically as a penance for that act, he's reciting all four of the Vedas at all times ever, until the end of creation. That's what his four heads are for, supposedly, Reci reciting the four Vedas, you know. He's just totally in a state of penance and restraint ever since that time. That's also why he's related to Saturn. Brahma is related to Saturn as planets go, just so you know, because Saturn's a planet of restraint. And so in this one myth, we find so much value that we're going to keep, you know, going back to. But, you know, this is why it's called Mrigashira. This is why it's the star of the deer. This is why it's considered like the searching or the hunting star, because this is the star or the place where after Brahma created, he got, basically, he got lost in his creation. You see, he lost his uh, dharma and sense of dharma in, the, in Maya. He got lost in Maya, in the creation. That's what this star is about, is being lost in Maya. Um, that's why it's ruled by Soma, the god of immortality, the god of Maya. The way to make Maya never end, you see, is immortality or Soma. Um, the soma is literally a super drug. That's another, that again, there's three meanings for it, but soma is also this super drug that Indra and the gods take so that they can be super powerful, never defeated, and have sex as long as they want, and have the best sex, and orgies, and all this stuff. Like, the stuff you think about with, like, even, like, the Greek gods and Zeus and all this stuff. There's a lot, and by the way, there's just a lot more sexuality in Vedic mythology and stuff before the Islamic influence, just so you guys know. Sex was not taboo at all. Um... And look at ancient Indian sculptures and architecture from before the Muslim era. And the women are very voluptuous and beautiful and showing off their skin and all these things. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, anyways, <laughs> but but yeah, so this is very much a star of seeking the, the Soma or seeking the worldly immortality in life. Okay. And then the next star, Ardra, ruled by Shiva, Rudra. The, is the hunter the thing that decapitates us and ends us? That's the star of seeking spiritual immortality or true immortality, which is only found through like the yogic path, which Shiva symbolizes. Or 
not only through the yoga path, but through spiritual liberation. I'm not saying you can only get awakened if you're a yogi, but through enlightenment, the internal path, which Shiva symbolizes, controlling your animalistic nature and bringing it up higher, like having the serpents around his head and everything, symbolizing the kundalini being awakened and everything. Okay. Okay, so based on what I was saying before, <clears throat> you can understand how there's two kind of really important qualities of this star. On the one hand, the star is very gentle and soft and deer-like, and it's, um, you know, like just kind of wandering around and searching and trying to get the little bits of Soma out of the world. But then this star also is a star of violators and people who are going, who are trying so hard to get the Soma, the juiciness out of life, the power from life, immortality, uh, as much pleasure and enjoyment as they can, that they will violate, that they will do the wrong thing, that they will be unethical, that they will break righteousness or, you know, cosmic order. Um, and that's what this star is very much about. Like, you know, the Egyptians, when they were obsessed with immortality, like this was, this would have been a prominent part in their culture too. Um, uh, so this is actually a big star of, um, of that, of people who are really, really wanting worldly power and worldly soma and people who get really, really caught up in the allure of life and what it can promise can have a lot of Mrigashira things in them. You know, people who are always searching and hustling and, and just need that next thing, you know, that can be... A very much a big thing with Mikashira. So it's actually yeah, a big star of like sexual scandals, as we will come to find. Um, inappropriate sexual behaviors just across the board can be kind of related to this. Um, because again, Brahma, this is where Brahma kind of like violates and breaks his thing and remember Brahma is Prajapati the greatest of the ch of the child of the baby makers the most fertile like there's all this kind of sexual uh, machismo around that that name and everything and so Rohini and Rigashira are bi both big stars for like machismo and or sexuality for both men and women too like um it's they're both very very big stars for that and um you know, because women or you're basically having sexual success is like one of the highest kind of like sense of soma or I feel amazing about life. You know what I mean? The, the best juiciness of life. Think of this, like uh, the head of the deer. Deer heads are still used as trophies to this day, uh, symbolizing your conquest. You know what I mean? And men like to think of both men and women, I think, but more so men like to think of you know, having sex with someone they desired is like a conquest, like a successful conquest, or these, so all these sorts of ideas are very deeply rooted in this star. Um, and so it's also a star of like anything you're really going after in the world, you know, um, hunting. It's a star of hunt, it is the star of hunting. Um, striving after things like a deer is searching, you know. Um, it's this, it can, you know, Again, like a successful hunter adventure is like the deer head, you know? So it does kind of relate to that. Um, and, and going after that deer with passion and energy, you know? Um, and that, again, that's where I think that the Mars rulership comes in because there is that quality to it, but just don't try not to overemphasize that because it's ruled by the god Soma, who is essentially the moon. So it's actually huge... If you think about all these qualities, these are a lot more moon qualities, soft and gentle, um, spreading out, diffusing, you know, Mars hates to be spread out. Mars wants to be direct, you know? So it's not, it's just don't overemphasize Mars. I really can't say that enough. Um, and yeah, you know, like in more ancient times, Soma was more about, what well, you're reading about, it, it was more the Vedic deity who was correlated to the moon, but was not just the moon. Um, in you know, and as the moon waxed, the sages, you know, the soma would grow and build on the planet and in the plants and in the earth. And then as at the full moon, they would have the soma ceremony and drink the soma. And then as the moon waned, the gods would be drinking the soma, you know what I mean? And causing it to wane. And that was kind of how it was thought to be with the waxing and the waning of the moon. Um, 
so yeah these people are really searching and hunting sort of like Ashwins in a way uh, but not but in a little bit of a different way um, and they're seeking something that uh, doesn't die but it's unfortunately they're seeking in the world and all things in the world will die and that's why the star needs to lead to Rudra or Ardra the, the spiritual star but see if you have all your plants just in this star and not in Ardra you're probably not as seeking uh, spirituality, you're, you're probably more seeking Maya and worldly uh, fulfillment, you know? And that's that's fine, I'm not, no judgment here. We all have different incarnations we have to take for different things, and that's what astrology shows us. But that's how you want to interpret this star. Oh, another way to oh, yeah, another way to, to, to another way that this story is told is that Brahma created a daughter that was so beautiful and enamoring that he had the hots for her and couldn't control himself. That's another little interpret, alternate interpretation. It doesn't really change much about it, but the idea is that this star can cause even Brahma to lose his sense of things. You see what I'm saying? And go searching for the Soma and do inappropriate things. He was about to commit incest, you know? And that's when Shiva stepped in and killed the deer, chopped its head off, threw it into the sky. And this symbolizes how uh, we need a higher consciousness to intervene and interrupt that process you know what i mean um it symbolizes like the seeking of our own ego desires and then in the, it, that that happens in life just all the time and in creation eventually that frustrates us and sometimes grace a guru or eventually a higher consciousness like shiva will just emerge and cleanse us of that and dissolve that and transmute that or destroy that uh lower desire um and so Mrigashira symbolizes being incredibly focused on worldly seeking. Ardra symbolizes being incredibly disgusted with worldliness and worldly seeking and wanting to chop off the ego's head. You see? And that's what Rudra is all about. And the thing is, is that, um, yeah, and again, like, we're, the next sutra is going to use the word Mrigayava, which refers to deer, and it can mean deer and grain, or hunters. And again, that's because Mrigayu, this is the star of hunters, and the next star is literally, it says Shiva needs, or the arms of Rudra need hunters so he can destroy them. That's what the next sutra says. So this, it's very fascinating how this plays out. But yeah, Mrigayu, a violator, a hunter, an exploiter, one who torments deer, one who violates the timid. That's what this. That's what Brahma was given because of this star. So this, these are all qualities that we need to watch out for. If this star is really afflicted, if you're dating someone and you already aren't sure how their their ethics are, and they have all their planets here, and there maybe are some afflicted planets here like Jupiter or Mars, that can be a major sign that this person might not be able to control their ethics when they're seeking pleasure. You know what I mean? We'll go more into that with a lot of fun examples. And when it comes to creepy elite people that do all kinds of creepy sex scandals, human trafficking, stuff like that, this star is really, really prominent, you're going to see. And that's one of the main reasons I want to talk so much about this, because this is a connection that is really a very modern, literal connection. You can see it's quite scary, really, when we research it. Okay. Okay, so now... Ever since uh, we have a better translation of the Taittiriya Brahmanas, the Nakshatra, there's actually these sutras on the Nakshatras and what they deal with, which I was showing you previously. So this is actually a new resource. What's fascinating is that the Taittiriya Brahmana has been around a long time, but no one really, we had horrible translations of, this, of these sutras, which were translated like from Sanskrit into Hindi, and then maybe into another language, and then into English, because it was so distorted and so off. It just made no sense. So we recently had these retranslated, um, and that's the sutras that I'm sharing, that, that's the manual that I'm working off of, and that I have, and that you guys have now too. And so we really have to focus on these sutras and try to find out new indications and new meanings that maybe have been lost over time, and quite a bit has been, it seems. So the sutra on Invaka, yeah, so again, Invaka means a gentle request, a whisper, just a, hey, can I have that? Like a gentle, soft, gentle kind of um, supplication, you know? Um, and so it's saying, Somasya invaka vittatani parastad vyanto avastad. So basically, 
Somasya of the moon of Soma, Vitatani, means um, like not physically defined diffusions or extensions, um, <clears throat> vapors, like little mists. Um, and so it's saying that Soma the, is, is mist, is vapors, is spreading out. You know what I mean? Like, um, and that's again what this star is all about, creation, spreading out all through creation, searching the Soma that's just spread and diffused all throughout creation. So this is actually a star of like, diffusion scattering we're actually going to find an example when i give the examples of a woman who fell and broke her hip and her hip just fractured and scattered so if you in a in an accident chart in rigashira it would cause a bone to sh to just shatter and scatter rather than make a clean break you know what i mean or just be bruised or this or that so this is a star of like diffusions spreading out the soma and then the parastat Vianto uh, or Vianta is the, the root of that word, <clears throat> which means weaving. So it's the star of spreading out and diffusing and then weaving back together. And that's what creation is, you know, like Vishnu is the one that weaves all of creation together and the soma, the little, the bits of juice. Soma also refers to like water, like nourishing nectar. So there's nectar all around. Let's think of nectar actually, like, um, this star is about searching for the nectar, and creation is nectar diffused all throughout it. What are deer doing? They're going around looking for little lichens, like, ooh, there's a little bit of nectar. Ooh, now I'm going to run over here. Here's a little bit of nectar. Ooh, now I see a human walking on the trail, being obnoxiously loud. I could smell him from miles away. I'm going to run further away from him to get away from him and stay with the Soma and avoid the hunters. You know, um, that's what this star is about. That's what it is. Um, Vianta is you know, yeah, weaving, weaving things together. This star, it likes to go out and find things that it wants to weave and then weave them together, which is like the moon, the number two planet. And again, Soma, number two, duality. So there's this whole emphasis on, uh, number two is when creation, when duality exists, creation exists, male and female exists. And we see how much this star is about searching for that. Um, And it wants to, like, it's very personal, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's a very personal star, we could say, um, as a result of all these things that we've aforementioned. And it's a star of, like, wandering. That's why in the Nakshatra Keywords video I gave, I was like, this is the star of van life. Like, people who love to just, like, go and wander around in vans and travel the countryside or backpacking through Europe. You know, you might have had Mrigashira going when you were backpacking through Europe, if you ever did that, or these sorts of just ideas. Um, nowadays, it's really, or at least for a long time, this idea of of uh, just getting in an RV and just traveling around. Like a lot, of, I know a lot of young women were really like Instagram, like posting, and it's just like this ideal. It's just this real ideal thing to a lot of people, and I get it. But yeah, you'll see that this star is really prominent with those people. Um, and so, yeah, it's great for wandering. It's great for intimacy. Well, not if you're trying... <laughs> the ethics, it can be a star for not, you know, that not great ethics in that regard. But yeah, star for intimacy. That depends on the planets and the afflictions and everything or the, or the good of Ashtas going on with the star. But yeah, um, gentleness, fondness, you know, deer-like activities, um, friendly activities, travel. Uh, van, you know, again, van traveling, searching, um, herb harvesting, wild foraging, um, herbalism in general, harvesting or anything that, harvesting or doing anything that requires going around and getting the little soma of life, you know, um, cultivating mindfulness all around your day and everywhere you go. Um, spreading good cheer everywhere you go is kind of like an aspect of this star when it's really good. Um, these people, they just spread little bits of Soma. They diffuse it everywhere they go. And then it... Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it can be... Uh, <laughs> va uh, vaporizers. Things like that are rule of Imrigashira because this need to just diffuse outward, you know? And then weave back into creation. So, um, but then again, that's very sexual. You see, like, I gotta 
sow my seed into creation. Like that, si that same kind of thing you can see here too. So there can be a lot of uh, promiscuity with this star. So that's, those are all very interesting things. And then here's a few, um, here's another way to interpret that sutra. Um, the, cause yeah, the, it can also mean not just diffusion, but diminutive pervadings. Um, that's, I think the way that Ernst translated in the, in the PDF. So the diminutive, the bid, <laughs> the diminutive pervadings of Soma are diffusions from above and weaving from below. That's one of the interpretations. Um, another way to interpret it is the tiny dust of Soma is spreading and expansion from above and weaving from below. Or it can mean the tiny dust of Soma needs this expansion from above to weave below, but it's the same thing. It's just saying it's expanding and weaving. Um, the, or you could also say the tiny specks of the moon or of Soma need expansiveness in order to weave. You know what I mean? That could be another thing. But it's all about getting the Soma to flow down and pervade everything and then weaving that into the earth. That's what you're going to see uh, with examples, hopefully. Um, because, you know, Soma is that heavenly force of nectar of immortality, which we all need and rely on. And it's, it is weaved into creation. And there must be some energy or nakshatra that's best for finding that. That's what this is. Um, and that's why it's so soft and friendly. And so it can even relate to spiritually, like cultivating prana, chi, zen, being more zen, you know, um, being more gentle like a deer. It's about spreading this tiny dust all over as you do it. And that's also why it's mula. You know, again, kind of uh, just sensitive, fluctuating, like how plants will just go around the trail. You know, the trail's too beaten and rough. They're not going to just bear the pressure like a datu mineral or fight over it like a jiva. They're going to just go around it. That's what this star is about, weaving and going around. Oh, this is, oh, just go around it. You know, um... And it's, it's passive. It's also a passive star for this reason. And it's side facing, which I really like that because it's like a deer, which is side facing, searching around, looking for its options, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it can be, it's uh, great for all these lighthearted activities and even rejuvenating, socializing, making friends, but it's not great for marriage or aggressive actions or war, or doing like your prenuptials, or making long-term decisions with regards to uh, love, um, or really any, maybe not great for a lot of long-term decisions. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, so then we're gonna give some examples and go more in depth, but I hope that gives you guys a lot of things to think about with this star.